Hello everyone, this is Skarzig, and welcome back to another episode of Shardbound. Today, we're going to be playing some yellow. I'm really eager to show off the deck I came up with after the uh, recently done overhaul of yellow. A lot of cards were changed, reworked, uh, completely new cards basically added into the game. Um, I played a lot of this deck on stream, doing some tinkering and some testing, and you got a little taste of this deck in the stream highlight I had uploaded uh, the other day. So let's quickly go over the official deck list, uh, what I came up with here. So uh, looking at the deck, we've got two copies of Cut Down. Uh, this is our hard removal. The only spell we really need, right? Because yellow has a lot of really nice effects and utility built into the minions that they have, especially now with all the bonds that have been added. So um, we sort of get away with just using those abilities. And Cut Down is just there for the uh, removal of our opponent's largest threats that we won't be able to deal with any other way. It's really important to uh, draw into both of these. Um, we've also got two pack awakeners, again allowing us to uh, get some AoE damage, keep our opponent's board under control, you know, get some face damage here and there. Um, you've seen in my older builds, I just run one copy of pack awakener, but I've really come to appreciate the strength of the card, and now I am definitely running two. Uh, and this combo super well with Grand Worm Primal, who can now close the distance to any injured enemy, regardless of how far away they are, as long as there's an open tile, of course. And so that combined with uh, Pack Awakener is one of the best uh, combos for the deck. We've also got Vice Fang, the reworked one, now gets plus one attack for each injured enemy. So this has a lot of uh, utility in the early game. It's a nice one mana 2-4, pretty sturdy stat line, and it's just going to be able to trade up into a lot of stuff or threaten some face damage. You know, it's, it, it scales up with the number of injured enemies. So, you know, it has usually between 2 and 3 attack. It's not, it's not going to see usually more attack than that, right? Because you don't want your opponent to get like a massive board ever in shard bound so you don't want to be greedy with the vice fang primal and say oh i wanted to have a bunch of attacks so i'm gonna let my opponent summon a bunch of stuff that i can injure first there will be plays where you are able to injure a bunch of things hit with the vice fang primal and then finish off all of the stuff that you injured and uh, that's where a little bit of the utility lies but generally vice fang primal is just a solid one drop you don't want to get too greedy with it buccaneer is also fantastic in this list a two mana two four that um, can deal one damage to a, a unit in line of sight and that ability is free so it basically counts as a ranged minion that can strike back in melee range and that uh, that one damage ping is going to enable a lot of our other um, synergistic injured minion uh, effects and abilities so buccaneers very very solid combines also with lozar tactician um, after this this minion deals any damage draw card so then all of a sudden you have that uh, ranged ping that's going to be drawing you additional cards so buccaneers really solid for this deck really helps out with uh, splinter wing primal as well getting the splinter wing and the buccaneer developed early is fantastic um, dusk blade also in the deck just to uh, give us a little bit more removal help us keep our opponent's board under control if we get a slow start or if our opponent is trying to uh, put a lot of pressure on us dusk blade is going to allow us to alleviate a lot of that pressure you know it's going to trade up into most things dusk blade i think you do want to save it just as a zoning tool um, to keep your opponent's large threats away rather than using this of course to you know trade into uh, something with you know, three or four HP that you can usually clean up other ways besides. Um, Spear Maidens, uh, two mana, two, four. When it dies, you get two throwing spears in your hand. And the throwing spear is a one mana uh, spell that deals one damage to a unit in line of sight. So you can use this to set up uh, those injured plays as well. Combos fantastically with cut down. Um, just that extra ping can allow you to uh, get a trade in certain situations where you normally wouldn't be able to. And I love the plays that Spear Maid enables with uh, Grand Worm Primal, Splinter Wing, etc. And uh, just to talk a little bit more about Splinter Wing, um, you know, it having 4 HP is actually really solid for a ranged minion in the early game because it survives a lot of those early answers that your opponent might play to uh, to take it out. You know, Silverwing, uh, Tempest Hound, Hound Class Mech, right? Those minions that uh, are going to be used to clear ranged that take control of an early high ground position. 
um, they need to spend an additional resource to get that one damage in onto the splinter wing primal and that can be just as good and then if splinter wing survives the ability to deal double damage to injured minions means that it's just going to be getting you know some really big procs off we've also got two uh two frenzy dire hides this is a three mana three eight that's uncontrollable it's just going to start running to your opponent's side of the board and trading into stuff i like this menu just because of the early pressure that it provides a three mana three eight is actually very durable right mm, pardon me and so your opponent is going to need to figure out um how they're going to you know get the dire tide you know kited Right? They, if they want to play something really big in front of it, so be it. The Dire Hide will just injure that enemy, and then you get your synergies going that way. Um, the fact that they might have to change their um, positioning or position awkwardly to make sure the Dire Hide um, hits what they want or doesn't go face, you know, is just going to give you um, a lot of breathing room and a lot of pressure in the early game. So I do really like this unit. Um, I would recommend getting these developed early if you can. Late game, like if you have, um, if you have to choose between Dire Hide or maybe something else, Dire Hide is probably lower priority on the list, especially if you're already ahead. Um, so Keys of Skirmisher is another fantastic unit, a 3-mana 5-3 that has the ability to give plus 2 movement to an, to a friendly minion. And so you can use this to enable movement-based plays just like Shade, right? You give a little bit of extra reach to something to get a trade, combos fantastically with Duskblade. Um, I've had games where I've cast it on Frenzy Dire Hide before just so that it can go in. It's even harder for your opponent to position around it. Um... I've also used it to um, be able to enable Buccaneer or another ranged unit to get onto a key high ground location to get a ping, that sort of stuff. Like Keys of Skirmisher, I love the utility in this unit, and as long as whatever you cast its bond effect on lives, Keys of Skirmisher also gets that plus two unit. So it just becomes a uh, really high damage threat that can uh, with, with extra reach. We've only got one copy of Balos Ambusher, um, which can give Shroud to a friendly uh, minion. And when this was revealed on the uh, special preview stream for the overhaul, people were kind of going insane, like, oh my god, Giftable Shroud is, uh, you know, really, really strong. The devs are aware of how strong this card is. This deck, however, doesn't really rely on, you know... Um, you know, buffing a minion up and then giving it Shroud so your opponent, it's hard for your opponent to deal with it or any key minions that are going to be in the back line, right? Um, so we just have the one for utility. You can cast it on um, like Lozar Tactician, for example, or your Moya Primal or your Viper Fang, something like that, or anything else that at the time is actually providing a lot of value for you that you want to keep alive. Bale's Ambusher just makes that minion uh, makes it a bit more protected and you get a 4-6 out of it. We've also got Growler Primal. You choose an injured enemy and you summon this minion on a random tile next to it and deal 2 damage. This allows us to finish something off in the back line after we pinged it with Buccaneer Spears. You can see the synergy here is real. Moya Primal is a fantastic unit. 4 mana, 4-6. Four, you pay 2 mana to grab a minion within 3 tiles, teleport it and herself up to 3 tiles away from where it was so you're gonna be able to uh you know pull enemy minions out of position and uh kill them right with get more favorable trades that way moya primal can also move your friendly minions into position and then uh give them a little bit of extra movement as well you know get get a range minion onto high ground get that dusk blade into position that kind of stuff you know even keys to skirmish or something with really high attack can help her uh fight a unit because Moya Primal can move, attack, use that ability, um, then sort of retreat, right, using that to pluck an enemy out of position and then uh, have something else finish it off. So I've had repeated uh, Moya Primal ability procs just completely destroy a game, right, where your opponent, especially if you're in a dominant position already, Moya Primal just makes it so your opponent cannot possibly develop a minion in a safe spot without it getting uh, picked off. We've also got two Tracker Primals in the deck. That has a Warcry to draw a card for each injured enemy minion. On average, I've only seen Tracker Primal actually draw like one card on average. Um, but it is a 4-mana 5-4. And there is potential for this to draw uh, maybe two or more cards. They did change this, of course, back when it was uh, when it used to be Rights Reader. 
um, the original version of Rights Reader used to draw a card for all injured enemies, so it included the hero in that count, and so it was on average able to draw two cards, right? So it was a bit too strong, so then they took that away, so it's only minions, and then they reworked it all together to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so you do get a nice body out of the deal. Um, if you did want to cut it, I wouldn't blame you, because there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of four drops that uh, could probably get you some really dank value as well, like Gorilla Raider, um, has some potential. Um, the this is the reworked Ghost Primal, so that might that might be useful. You just deep strike. You just drop a four or five down into your opponent's spawn or something. You know, get their uh, units out of position. Shockblade Smuggler or something or Mind Thief might be an interesting four drop if you're looking for uh, for card draw as well. Um, we've also got Viper Fang Primal, which has poison when attacking injured enemies. So it's able to finish off anything that's on at full HP. And so that right away just opens up plays with the Buccaneer and the Spear Maiden. And then suddenly Viper Fang Primal is able to just, you know, annihilate your opponent's board once you get it on the high ground or something. Grand Worm has been reworked. It's a 5 mana 6 5 that can move to open tiles next to any injured enemy. So it basically is a pseudo flyer. Um, you're going to have to do a little bit of uh, working around sometimes to injure something that's in a good position. Um, but once the Grand Worm Primal goes in, you get a nice beef beefy face hit. You get Pack Awakener shenanigans. That's like one of the key combos of the deck. And so that can be that can be really strong. Um, with only 5 HP, it is pretty fragile though. So the Grand Worm Primal usually is just going to go in, hit a key target, and then just get mopped up afterwards. So you're going to be using this almost like uh, removal. But if you can get face hit and then force your opponent to make the trades instead, or if you can get a nice pack awakener that's just icing on the cake, those are tactician I already kind of touched on. Um, this is a very, very strong ability, right? Because those are tactician not only gifts the ability to when it draw when the minion deals any damage to draw a card, it has that ability itself. So um, you're going to be drawing a lot of cards with this thing if this. A minion or its bond isn't answered right away and um, the reason I only have one copy even though it's so strong is because of the fact that it's going to draw you usually one card the turn that you summon it and then afterwards if it sticks you're gonna be getting like way too much card draw almost because you don't want the Lozark tactician usually you want your minions to hit whatever they can every turn right but you'll eventually be drawing like way too many cards so having just the one provides just the right amount of card draw for the deck we've also got two penumbra and assassins great for picking off backline threats also allows us to injure enemies and uh you know set up for big trades that way you know you get to tempo a 4-4 into your opponent's side of the field that sort of stuff just a uh, um, little bit more removal built into the deck then we've also got thundering giant for the same reason allows us to to injure enemies and uh you know opens up play with the viper fang or the grand worm primal things like that so let's go ahead and jump into q and see what we can do here And um, again, if you caught the stream highlight, well, it was one of the games that one of the numerous games I'd played with this list when I was testing it on stream. And um, the, I had a lot of fun with this deck. You do have to do a lot of thinking, but once you get a foothold, um, you can do a lot of uh, good work just controlling uh, your opponent's spawn, right? Until eventually you build up a big enough board to go in for the kill. You do need to be wary of AoE. Um, static Discharge is always a big deal. Precise Detonation, right? These are cards that, um, you know, can just completely devastate your forces. This this deck is, like, completely uh, minion-based. It just has two cutdowns as its only spells. And Yellow does have some pretty good spells, like Feral Rush and Swift Strike can be used to really great effect. But, again, the cutdowns are just really all we need right now. So we're still just looking for a game. It is pretty late in my time zone right now with the recording, at the time of recording. So I can respect that it's taking a little bit longer. But I don't mind if the um, matchmaking widens up a bit to match me against somebody a bit higher ranked if need be. Brother, Ooh, mirror match. Okay, where's Interesting. I know you know. So I'm down for this. We'll see if uh, 
our opponent is playing the uh, aggro build. Pack Awakeners, even though they're one drops, we want them to come to us later on uh, when we have combo pieces. So we're just going to replace those, get the Buccaneer and the Dire Hide. This is going to slow down a lot of our opponent's tempo. All right, so he can uh, move here and then pounce. And so he actually has a lot of uh, pressure, like, to get into our spawn immediately. I think what we're going to do is, um, let me see, one, two, three, pounce. One, two, three, pounce. Yeah, so we're just going to move here. I think we can uh, take things a bit slower. And again, this is, this is under the assumption that he's playing... Um, an aggro build because I have seen I have had a taste of that build before where they just immediately pounce into your side of the board and they're doing stuff with like um, what is it called royal scout to give their minions deep strike and then they're just tempoing in ah bad read he has the uh, the splinter wing but that's all good Hunts on. We'll, uh, let me see, because he can go one, two, three to put the splinter wing on high ground. And if I want to, to make sure I'm in range of it, I want to move here. Yeah, we'll play the, uh, the buccaneer in the back line. Because this is, this is like a range unit for us. And um, the reason I'm not playing the Buccaneer forward is because I don't want Juro to answer it somehow, right? Because, like, if he moved around and pounced and then hit it for two, I want to just have this alive for repeatable damage, even if the Splinter Wing does survive for an extra turn. Because it only deals double damage to injured minions, so I don't mind actually just taking a couple pings from the Splinter Wing, right? It's almost just like when you're going up against a ranged hero. As you try to jockey for a position in the early game, you're going to take a couple pings of damage. And so if he, like, hits me with the splinter wing, then, you know, we, we're just evened out on damage, where the buccaneer is going to be doing one damage ping to him. I get to slap him in the face, and I've got dire hide as well. And if he goes to ham into my side of the board, he's forced to use pounce to get away. Ooh, fancy! Toka warrior. With uh, the splinter wing primal, it's a fantastic combo. Whoa! Whoa! I was expecting him to move that onto the high ground and uh, hit me, but he's actually doing that so that um, he has uh, more pressure into my spawn rather than just getting that greedy damage in and then poten having me potentially with a play to uh, finish it off. So that's fine by me. That's fine by me. Now I do have three mana. And I could develop my own Splinter Wing if I felt like it. Um, but I think I'm actually just going to play the Dire Hide. Because he's on my side of the board. He's in my turf. <laughs> and so we're just going to threaten. You know right, because now, if he runs away, the Dire Hide's going to chase him. He needs to move the Toka Warrior up to potentially kite this. You see what I mean? He's like in a pickle now. He's going to need to pounce to get out. And so... By his by going aggressive early, now I'm able to punish and force him to spend two mana. Oh no, he's going in! He's going in! Cut down actually would have been really nasty there. Oh, that's right, the Splinter Wing does double damage! I forgot about that. Wow, I can't believe I forgot about that. Toka Warrior onto the Splinter Wing is nuts. So we do need to figure out how to deal with this. Wow, that was a... Uh, what would I have played there instead, though? Maybe Spear Maiden? It would have died for free to the Splinter Wing. So at the very least, the Dire Hide did get in three damage. And I can just back up if I want to. Because I have my own Growler Primal.
Hmm. Yeah, you know what? He he's got a lot of pressure on us. So we're just gonna try to make this as like a, a really difficult decision for him as possible. I'm here. Right. Basically, if he's gonna go ham on us, I'm gonna try to punish him for that. And look, if he wants to set up for a splinter wing, then uh, he'll have to hit with the growler primal. Or his hero and take more damage for the splinter wing to finish it off. It cl it, tra it trades cleanly into the Toka warrior. If he sets Growler Primal down to uh, to one HP, then Buccaneer can kill it. So I actually really like this play with the Growler Primal. I have potential next turn to just develop the Grand Worm, and then he won't be able to uh, to deal with it. Ooh, Pack Awakener, fancy! So he's gonna take out the Buccaneer. That's solid. Jerk. Wow, he's taking a lot of damage. So if I can survive this onslaught, then I just win because he's super low. I'm here. Oh, another Growler Primal. Gosh. Thundering Giant. Hmm. Hmm. I can Let's move go. this way. Which is still in range of all of his stuff. And I can pounce. So it'll put me down to three mana. Then I can get the Vice Fang and the Splinter Wing developed. Uh, just for additional body blocking. That might be my best bet. The problem is, is if I pounce, that's Pack Awakener. That's three, four, five, six, seven. Then he would only need four. But right now it's lethal. So um, I'm just going to have to go... This line, I think. Take him out. Then we'll develop a uh, Vice Fang Splinter Wing. Fresh meat. Yeah, but this is this is really rough for us, unfortunately, where we uh, don't have a lot of comeback mechanisms. And that, that Pack Awakener was, was clutch. I had a feeling that he was going to be aggressive, but I didn't respect the uh, the Splinter Wing enough. So, But we're both really, really low. It's just that he has a lot of board. Um, if, I could, if I could just get a little bit of breathing room to get the Grand Worm up and running, that would be great. All he really needs to do, though, is uh, keep these guys in my spawn. I'll put you in the dirt. Ouch. I'm here. And he's got the dancer. Crikey! Wow, we really didn't even get to play there. Hmm. I wonder if swapping out the Dire Hide for Shield of Durant might be correct, because I think that's another three mana minion. I think just to give us a little bit more pressure in the early game because I've had a lot of success with the dire hide but we saw there how it can sort of just get uh, snowballed on if it doesn't get enough value out of the gate and shield of Durant is a really solid three drop is rank breaker good do I just do rank breaker instead that might be a little bit better we'll do rank breaker I like that because we do have the keys of skirmisher uh, in our list I can't believe I forgot about rank breaker I think that might be the key here anyway, we're going to queue up, try to play another one. 
just with the uh, deck description in that really short game, we're already at 24 minute recording. So this is uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video because that lack that last game like, eh, kind of felt awful for me. I I felt I saw we saw that our opponent was in gold rank right, and I was like, hmm, what is he climbing with? What is he climbing with? Uh, probably the aggro build. That's the one I think that people were the most excited to try out, and he did get you know, the nuts, right, into both Growler Primals, into the pack Awakener. Uh, so that was a bit, that was a bit absurd. And I think that this means he's slightly lower ranked than we are. Oh, but we do get the, the, uh, the Rank Breaker, and he's a Skirmisher. We're keeping, uh, Cut down. We don't need Tracker Primal. I think we throw these two and keep these, because, uh, Rank Breaker has a lot of potential for, uh, early pressure. Dusk Blade, Splinter Wing, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Vice Fang, that's a curve. That is a curve, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so here's the thing Vice Fang, I could easily just develop it here to pressure him really hard, but Hound Class Mech plus his Hero Ping would just clean it up. So we want to respect Hound Class Mech because it has charge and it pressures these two tiles on the other side of the high ground. So we are just going to, uh, we're going to play nice with the Vice Fang. Red is a very tricky matchup because um, you can lose a lot of tempo early if you misplay and then you can't come back from it. Um, you have to sort of just, you know, step back, let them keep up a board. Um, by us moving down here, it's forced them into this line of sight which allows us to um, just develop here, which I think is a more free, uh, you know, a bit more mobile of an area to summon within. Now, I suppose the question is, do I get the Splinter Wing up or the Dusk Blade? Probably the Splinter Wing, because we're going to be able to pressure his spawn immediately with it. Again, respecting the uh, Hound Class mech. Side by side. And the thing with red is that um, they do have an OTK build where they actually save their Hound Class mechs, um, you know, and then buff them up and then just summon them on it one turn to kill you. So he might not, even if he has the Hound Class mech to punish, he might not want to use them regardless. So we could maybe exploit that to get a, a lot of early tempo. But now we're on three mana. I think playing the Rank Breaker in his face is uh, correct here. Because the shielded gizmo can't reach. Ooh, strike pack. That's that's interesting. He could do strike pack, hound class mech. You see, that's like one piece of the combo. So seeing the strike pack, the uh, strike pack, ba basically guarantees that he is um, OTK red. So we are we're gonna put on the pressure here with the uh, rank breaker and the vice fang. We can also uh, get a shot in here, and we can move up uh, ourselves to block that line of sight, and the shielded gizmo can't hit us either. Shields uh, are actually, damage shields uh, are a little bit difficult for yellow to deal with, but, um, you know, with the splinter wing and the buccaneer, it allows us to make short work of it. Ooh, god. So that's actually really good for us. Because um, the overdrive is one key one key part of their burst that he just used to take out a three drop, and now the shielded gizmo gets taken down by the splinter wing primal, and vice fang gets to uh, go in unimpeded. And there's the advanced scout, gives a minion deep strike, so he has potentially now both hound class mechs in his hand, and they both have deep strike. Um, so, now he's just going to try to draw into a bunch of bops, right? That's that's going to be his game plan. So, the Tracker Primal feels kind of bad. Although, Duskblade Buccaneer is probably good as well. Just uh, for extra pressure on the board. Hmm. We're going to play the Buccaneer up here with us. 
because it's a pseudo range unit and it'll be great on the high ground and duskblade i think can do work uh down below actually we'll get the the vice fang is going to get uh face hit basically forcing him to make the advanced scout trade and then ping it with his hero um he could reverse that trade right use the advanced scout to take out the dust blade along with his hero so i'm gonna actually change my mind and uh play the dust blade up here with us protecting the splinter wing now buccaneer is going to be able to ping whatever he summons in this area and then splinter wing can potentially finish it off we're actually running low on cards but again because he's playing otk um, he technically doesn't have a lot of cards either. You know what I mean? He has to save his combo pieces. If we get him to burn Hound Class Max just to, you know, keep from dying, then I think we just win in the long run if we drag the game out. With Lozar Tactician next turn, which we can actually combine with the Buccaneer. And, uh, you know, start getting those repeatable pings. The reason we're going to put it on the, uh, Buccaneer... And uh, not the Splinter Wing is because the Buccaneer can uh, counterattack in melee range. So when uh, our opponent goes in to finish it off, the Buccaneer will be able to draw us a couple other cards. Um, Upgrade Engineer had Deep Strike, so he buffed the Hound Class Mech. He is going to use that to take out the Splinter Wing. Okay. So this is actually really good for us. Ooh, Pack Awakener. Hang on a sec. Hmm. I can, I can Tracker Primal, Pack Awakener. No, no, because then I, I'd have to pounce to get a Primal on the board. So we're just going to uh, lose our Tactician, the Buccaneer, as our original plan. Duskblade kills the Upgrade Engineer, lives with 1 HP. Buccaneer pings that. And then... Um, I'll finish it off. We move up. Duskblade will just wait. We'll just hold um, in the back line. Lozar Tactician and Buccaneer now. Going to allow us to draw through our deck. Get some more threats. Get some more damage. That's one Hound Class mech down. So the part of the OTK build is they actually use Master of Faces which duplicates itself it transforms into a target minion so like you get extra hound class mechs so getting that one down out of the way isn't that big a deal armory gunner we need to uh we need to take care of for sure with the lozar tactician and the buccaneer and uh, my hero i think we just take him out though let me see we've got pack awakener which uh, doesn't help us here Tracker Primal could be good for pressure. We're on six. So Balos Ambusher on the Lozar Tactician would actually be really dank. And then, like, he it makes it very hard for him to uh, to deal with this bond. But anyway, we want to uh, run around, kill the Armory Gunner. Lozar Tactician kills the Armory Gunner because we do not want that hand buff to go down. We draw. exact, And the other thing, too. Is that, of course, we're drawing our cards first before we spend our mana. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So we are going to get the Balos Ambusher up on the Lozar Tactician. And we are going to summon the Spear Maiden. Duskblade moving in. Um, we have potential to use Keys of Skirmisher on the Duskblade. To move it into trade into something big. One, two, three, four, five. Gives him access to this entire area. And Lozar Tactician is going to help out with that as well. And you see now he's like, oh man, I, I have to focus on the Buccaneer, right? Because the Lozar Tactician is shrouded. And even if the Buccaneer goes down, I lose out on the card draw, but I still get to keep a shrouded 2 5 on high ground. This is also very spooky because of Static Discharge. Really wondering if it's worth it for Duskblade to trade into things here. 
I've got to pack Awakener here. Like, this is way too good to pass up. Thundering Giant. Yeah, anyway. I can move, pounce back. Side by side. To turn into a primal. Yeah. Then we uh, play the pack awakener on me. I attack his hero. Don't take strike back damage. That um, ruins all of that. <laughs> then we get to ping. You know I had this. What a waste. Hmm. And then we... I could have also tracker primaled earlier and drew more cards. So we're actually just going to do that. And I am... Oh, he just concedes. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of card draw. So, yeah, that was um, that was a better example of us picking up on our opponent's deck archetype and adjusting our play style accordingly. Um, our opponent drew into all of his combo enablers, right? He got the deep strikes and the... Uh, and, you know, that, that combo going, but didn't draw into enough defensive stuff to keep us at bay. So we, and we got a sick curve, holy moly. But you can kind of see how the deck does, right? Once you get a foothold, once you are ahead, the, the deck can stay ahead. But if you get tempoed out against early like that, when you're in an aggressive matchup, then, uh, then it sort of can really draw awkwardly and fall behind because it's, it's a very methodical deck it's a very slow and steady deck but i think that you're still going to get some mileage out of a deck like this simply because um yellow is one of the only aggro builds out there right now i know that orange has a tempo build i know that purple has a tempo build but they aren't played as much and yellow has a really bad matchup versus orange anyway so you know if they're playing uh they, then they just have like double advantage on you if they're playing tempo orange so I think that I've really enjoyed the deck, and again, I love the synergy, I love the crazy plays that you can get, and once you get set up, like, you just become this monstrous force with all the bonds and whatnot. But thank you so much for joining me today, I will see you next time, and you have a good one.